It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you and welcome to the Science Bowl. Nice to have you here today. In this, our 37th year of competition, we bring together outstanding elementary and middle school students and see how much science they know. And hopefully they learn some science from being on the program. We help you, hope you take away some information and maybe answer some of the questions yourself. Two great middle schools joining us today. Let's meet them right now from Charles Carroll. Please say hello to Brenda. Brenda, wave to everybody at home. Nice to have you here, Brandon, all eighth graders. Daniel is our captain. Hey, Dan, wave to everybody at home. And Apiemi, nice to have you here as well. They are playing against College Park Academy. First time ever on the Science Bowl. Say hello to Mimi. Hey, Mimi, nice to have you here. Hayden is here, the captain of the team. Hayden, if you wave to everybody. And Xavier is also part of the team and the College Park team. All members who have played the Science Bowl before when they were in elementary school. So they're keeping up that tradition. Here on the Science Bowl, we have six categories of questions. Let's share those categories with you right now. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. And here on the Science Bowl, we arrange our game board according to question difficulty. The left-hand side, the five and 10 point questions, somewhat easier. They get increasingly more difficult, 15, 20, and ultimately 25, the toughest of them all. Both of our teams start out at 50 points apiece. Never deduct any points for incorrect answers. At the end of the two rounds, one of these two outstanding, good-looking teams will come back to play our game again against Robert Goddard for the chance to be the third of our four semifinalists in this year's middle school competition. Let's make sure everything's working properly before we start. Let's go to the red team. Daniel, would you try your buzzer for me? It looks like it's in fine shape. Good luck to you and to Apiemi and to Brandon. And Hayden, how about the green team? Looks and sounds A-OK -okay as well. Good luck to Mimi and Hayden and to Xavier. You guys ready to do this? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah, some of you look a little apprehensive. Just relax. You're going you're gonna to do just fine, all of you here. We go alphabetically. C comes before C-H before C-O. So Charles, Carol, Daniel, let's play the game. Give me a category and a number. Let's go. Zoo Parade for 10. Zoo Parade for 10 points. This American venomous snake was also the nickname for the penny for many years and for the northerners who were against the Civil War. Name that snake. College Park. What you got? Yankee. Yankee? No, no, Charles Carroll. This American venomous snake was the, also the nickname for the penny for many years and for the northerners who were against the Civil War. Is it python or something? Any idea? Uh, what about the python? python. Copperheads. Copperheads. Pennies are made out of copper. That was your clue there. Okay, no points, but we go back to Daniel. Okay, Daniel. Another category and another number, young man. Green things for 15. You decide. Uh, green things for 15. Green things for 15 points. Teams, these S initialed trees in California's Yosemite National Park, the tallest of which is called the grizzly giant and are thought to be over 3,000 years old, are being threatened by fires that are burning longer and hotter than ever. Name those S initial trees. Those are the giant sequoias. The sequoias, like the redwoods, the tallest trees on earth out there in California. Okay, uh, go again, red. Uh, Dateline for 10. One more time? Dateline signs for 10. 
Dateline Science for 10 points. Question is as follows. You, and all, you all know the singer Taylor Swift. Remember her song, Shake It Off? Shake It Off? Singer Taylor Swift of Shake It Off fame has had one of these invertebrates named for her. A scientific name. An invertebrate whose name means a thousand legs. An invertebrate whose name means a thousand legs, Hayden. What you got, young man? Don't be ringing in unless you have an idea. Millipede. Charles Carroll. Charles Carroll. An invertebrate that has a thousand legs. They gave it a scientific name honoring Taylor Swift. Tell me what it is. Uh, I'll pass it to Brandon. Okay, Brandon, let's go. A millipede. Millipede, you got it. Give yourselves a hand. Give yourselves a hand. That's what I want to hear. Millipede. Milli means a thousand and pede means foot. Yeah, so the scientific name. Uh, what an honor. Okay, go. Red, got your first points. Science Popery for 10. Popery for 10. Here we go. All right. Uh, for 10 points, it's a visual question. Could you look, please, at the monitor in the studio? You're going to see some geese flying in that classic V-shaped formation. The leader has it easier. He creates an updraft because he's the lead goose. It's an example of the conservation of this. Conservation what? Energy. Conservation of energy. Of energy, absolutely right. So it's easier for the geese behind because they're benefiting from the guy in the front who's leading the way and doing all of the hard work, like a coxswain on a rowing team. Nice work there, guys. Thank you, Brandon. Go, Dan, pick. Um, let's get physical for 10. Physical for 10 points. This is not a multiple choice question, not, even though it may sound like one. These factors that can change in an experiment can be classified as dependent, independent, or controlled. All right, College Park. Independent variable. Variables is right, yes. Thank you, Xavier, for your help there. Yeah, it can be a dependent variable, an independent variable, or a controlled variable. So if you do science fair experiments, you probably know all about that. Yeah, I hope that sounds real right to you. Go green. You're on the board. Hayden. Let's get physical for 15. Let's get physical for 15 points. Teams, let's see if you know your chemicals. In a dry cell battery, like you put in it in a flashlight, the positive pole on the battery is called the anode. It's made of carbon. While the negative pole, the cathode, is made of this chemical element, the next to the last on the periodic table alphabetically. Lithium? Start again? Lithium? Not lithium, no. Alphabetically. Alphabetically. Alphabetic. Next to the last, yes. alphabetically, on the periodic the table, it is the chemical that makes up the negative pole of a dry cell battery. Huh? What is it? It's like eggs. It's okay, like guys. It's like, do, you, do you have an idea? It begins with this letter. Oh, Z. Z. Oh. Zinc. Zinc is the right answer there. Try again, please. Green. Oh, the buzzer has sounded. It was a fast first round. We have a low score, but it's a close score. Charles Carroll is at 70. College Park is at 60. And we'll have plenty more science bowl straight ahead. Well, we have a lot more science questioning to do, but let's find out first a little bit about our team players. Let's go to Charles Carroll first and talk to you about yourself and your school. Daniel, nice to have you here. Tell us uh, a little bit about Charles Carroll. Who is your principal? Mr. Hendershot. Mr. Hendershot. Uh, he's out there. He's a big booster. He's behind you guys. Who's your coach? Uh, Ms. Chaudhry. Ms. Chaudhry. And uh, as I was saying to you before we came on the air, she is responsible for getting Charles Carroll back into the science bowl swing of things for the past number of years. So, Margo, thank you so much for all that you've done to get the team here. Any alternates on your team? Uh, we have Christopher and Irene. Wonderful. We'll bring out just a few moments. Something about Charles Carroll you think everybody should know because it's a special place that you like to attend. Um, that um, there's a lot of great teachers there that really care about your education. Boy, unless you have that, you don't want to go to school. If you've got great teachers that care about you, nicely said, Daniel. So you're lucky. You're lucky to have those kind of professionals there as your advocates. What do you want to do someday, Dan? Uh, I want to, I want to uh, go to college to be an accountant. Be an accountant, yeah. Good luck to you. You're good. I like how you're playing the game. You're checking in with everybody. You're a good, uh, good leader. Danda, nice to have you here. How do you know so much science, Brandon? You certainly do. 
Um, when I was younger, me and my dad used to watch a lot of documentaries about yeah. animals, and I really got into it. And then once I started learning more science, I really got excited to learn more things. Yeah, because it kind of builds. You know, the more you know, the more you understand about the new things that come along. So you've done all the right things. Would you like to be a scientist someday, Brandon? Uh, yes. Yeah, any particular kind? Have you thought about that? I'd like to be a biologist or herpetologist. Wow. Reptiles, huh? Yeah. yeah. What do you do in your spare time? Uh, I like to read, listen to music, spend time with my brothers and family. All the good kids stuff. You, you're doing all the right stuff. Up at Yummy, nice to have you with us today. You seem a little nervous over there. I hope you're starting to relax a little bit. You're among friends here. Tell me a little bit about yourself. What do you like to do in your spare time? I like to um, read. Just to talk a little bit louder so we can hear you. I like to read, play softball, and listen to music. Yeah, so you're an athlete too. Yeah. Did you say listen to music? Yeah. Yeah. Any kind of particular music you like? <laughs> K-pop. Hip-hop. Absolutely. Hey, uh, we like what we like. Yeah. What do you want to do someday? I want to be a um, dermatologist. Wonderful. Politics, you just say? Dermatologist. Dermatologist. That's right, because you told me you wanted to go to school, and I told you. You have a lot of education ahead of you, too, because that involves going to medical school. You'll be good at it. Uh, keep, keep your dream. College Park Academy, nice to have you guys here. You've all played science bowl for a different elementary school. Hayden, you were here with Whitehall. You were on a championship team, yeah? Yes. Did you get a medal? Did you get a plaque? Uh, I got a plaque. Yeah, that's great. I hope you, you, you cherish that and keep it. Probably one of many things you've earned and will earn in a, in a great college or a great school career here. Tell me about College Park Academy. Who is the principal there? Our principal is Mr. Baker. Absolutely, and I remember him writing to say how interested your school was to play on this show. And who's your coach? Our coach is Miss Warden. Miss Warden, yes, and I know she has put in a lot of effort as well. Thank you very much to both of you. Uh, any alternates on your team? Uh, we have two alternates, Eris and Lucas. Wonderful. They're integral parts of the team. We'll see them in just a couple of moments here. Uh, tell me something about College Park Academy. Uh, we've never seen you here before. Why is it a special school? Um, it's a special school because the teachers, they really care and they know your potential and what you can do. And that, that's so important, isn't it? You know, they sometimes, they, sometimes we don't know what people see in us, but they see it. And you only realize it later on. So that's the mark of a great teacher and a, and a great person. Tell me about yourself. What do you want to do someday, Hayden? Um, uh, in this recent extreme weather that's been going around, yeah. I've been really interested in that. Let me share with the audience what, he told, what Hayden told me earlier. He said he wants to be one of the hurricane hunters. He wants to fly in those airplanes that go through hurricanes to gauge their strength and to determine their category. So he's a tough guy. He's a tough guy over there. So you want to get into some kind of weather, uh, meteorology maybe? Yeah. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, Mimi, nice to have you back. You were on the Glen Arden team. Also, uh, a winning school here on, in Science Bowl's 37-year history. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about your goals. What do you want to do someday? Um, I know I want it to involve science. I don't know exactly yet, but I want to be like an archaeologist, paleontologist, biologist, one of those. Yeah, yeah, a lot of options there. Uh, that's the problem. Too many choices sometimes. Yep. The good thing is, you know, because of STEAM, you know, you can balance science and art and all kinds of things into one career. What do you do in your spare time, Mimi? Um, I'm on a rock climbing team, so on Fridays I go down to my practice. Um, I really like sports. Um, I like to listen to music and hang out with my friends. Yeah, yeah, you're doing all the right stuff too. You're yeah, a uh, fine young lady. And Xavier, nice to have you here again. Wants to be president of the United States? Wants to have your own country? Did mm -hmm. you tell me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, have you always dreamt big? Yes, I have. Yeah. And I like your confidence over there. How do you know so much science? You've been a real asset to this team. When I was younger, I really wanted to be a scientist like a lot. And like I studied the planets. And like I have a big book at home that has details like about every planet. Wow. Even wow. some dwarf planets. Yeah. Too. Well, there are so many questions here that deal with the solar system and planets and also that'll be in your wheelhouse. So it's, it's great to have you here. 
All right, let's get back into the game here. And it is 60 for College Park, 70 for Charles Carroll. Last correct answer came from the green team. Lots of, po lots of points to give away here. Come on, guys, let's have a good second half. Go, Hayden, pick one. Science potpourri for 15. Potpourri for 15 points. It's a multiple choice question. You might have heard about this. It was terrible what happened at the National Zoo. A fox got into the bird exhibit and killed 25 flamingos. And then it got away, but they caught it. They killed the fox humanely. Do we say that it was cauterized, euthanized, or spayed? Euthanized. Which of those three, College Park? Euthanized. Euthanized. Euthanized is correct. Yes, indeed. Good. Go. Green. Green things for 10. Oh. Green things for 10. Green things for 10 points. It turns out that the flowers on seagrass plants have this process performed for them, not just by water currents, but also by small crustaceans playing the role of bees on land. Which one call it? Charles uh, Carroll. Uh, Let's go, guys. Let's get it. Uh, is it pollination? You got that right. Pollination it is. Perfect. Good. Come back there. All right. All, almost back. Now you're back in the lead by five points. Go, Daniel. Oh, you want to do Dayline for 15? Um, Dateline signs for 15. Dateline, 15 points. Former Maryland Senator Barbara Mikulski jokingly, ca jokingly called NASA's new James Webb telescope a $30 billion overnight success because it took so many years for the Webb to take the place of what other telescope? The Hubble telescope. The Hubble. Well, you were ready for that one. Absolutely right. Cut yourself 15 more points. Good work. Go. Red. I'm going to go Dateline again. Huh? Um, Dateline Science for five. Dateline for five points. Have you ever heard of Neil deGrasse Tyson? He's a great scientist. He's on television a lot, writes books. Neil deGrasse Tyson, at the urging of DC Comics, has found the location of this planet home to Superman. And also the name, yes, Charles Carroll. Is it Krypton? Is, his name, is it Krypton? It is Krypton. Absolutely right. It is. Also, it's also a chemical element. All right, go again. Red, you're on a roll. Which one call you? Want to do another five? Uh, green things for five. Green things for five points. It's kind of a joke. Listen, kind of a pun. What do you do after you take a picture of a flower? You wait for it to photo what? Charles Carroll. Photo, photo wise? For, is it photo wise? Photo wise? Yes, sir. Photosynthesize? Yeah, you wait for it to photosynthesize. You just took the picture. Thank you. Yeah, good. Red. Uh, when do body systems? Super 8 for 15. Uh, what? Super 8 for Yes, sir. Super 8 for 15. Super 8, 15 points. Baby spiders, known as spiderlings, are able to travel hundreds of miles by releasing strands of silk and then riding the wind. This is known as what means of travel? Yes, College Park. Gliding. Not gliding. Good try, good try. This is known as what means of travel? The same that humans do when they fill a canvas with hot air. Canvas, canvas with hot air? Huh? I think it's like... Migrate? Ballooning. Ballooning, the canvas with hot air. You were on the right idea over there, Hayden and the green team. Go red. You still have a lead of 105 to 75. Let's do body systems. Um, body systems for 10. Body systems for 10 points. Careful, careful. If you hyperventilate, <gasps> breathe faster and deeper than you normally would, you can get lightheaded and even pass out because your body is losing too much of this gas. College Park. Oxygen? No, sir. Wait, Charles Carroll. If you hyperventilate, you can pass out because you're losing too much of this gas. Carbon dioxide? Carbon dioxide, yes. That's why I told you to be careful there because carbon dioxide is the trigger to make you breathe. That's why if you hold your breath and you try to stay underwater too long, you can drown because you've gotten rid of all your CO2 and you're just not telling your, your respiratory system to breathe. Go again, red. A uh, science potpourri for five. Potpourri for five points. Here's your question. The soil on the moon is filled with plenty of glass shards from incoming meteorites, but very few nutrients. If that wasn't bad enough for any farmer, 
who might farm one day on the moon, the lunar surface, the lunar soil, is highly hydrophobic. Hydrophobic, meaning what is wrong with that there's soil? No What's wrong? Come on, Hayden. It, there's no water in it. Water cannot go into it. Say it again. Water cannot go into it. Water does not go into it. Yeah, it repels the water. Good answer. Good. Go green. Yes, sir. Body systems for 15. Body systems for 15 points. All right, teams, here's your question. If you eat liver for dinner tonight, maybe you don't like liver. If you eat liver for dinner tonight, or tongue or beef heart, you are eating an organ meat. But if you have a steak, like a lamb, or chicken breast, you're eating this kind of meat, named for the tissue or the body system they're part of. College Park. Xavier, what are you saying? Beef. No, not beef, not beef. Good try. A kind of meat named for the tissue or the body system they're, pa they're part of. Remember the, the category. Is it muscle? It is muscle, yes. It is muscle meat, not organ meat. Absolutely right. Good comeback. Go red. Uh, Zupre uh, for five. Zupre for five points. If an animal has no teeth, like an anteater, they can't, as the saying goes, bite off more than they can what? Chew. Charles Carroll? Chew. Yeah, they can't chew. There's nothing to chew with. Good. Go, Red. Uh, green things for 20. Green things, 20 points. Visual question. Look at the monitor, please. There is a picture with these que this question. Because the ginkgo tree with its fan-shaped leaves, there you see a ginkgo leaf, because a ginkgo tree with its fan-shaped leaves and stinky berries has been around since the time of the dinosaurs, it's considered a living what? Living Charles what? Carroll? A living what? A living fossil? It is a living fossil, indeed. Apiemi, thank you for your help. Thank you, Brandon. Good teamwork. Go again. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Zupre for 25. Zupre, 25, the big one in that category, teams. Two-part answer. Penguins were once flying birds that evolved over millions of years to have more solid bones so they could dive into the ocean more easily. And penguins have taste buds that are sensitive only to salty and sour. What two tastes are missing? Um, College Park. Come on, guys, you need these points. Pasta Mimi. Mimi. Uh, sweet and bitter. Sweet and bitter. You got it. Nicely done, Mimi. All right, you got those 25 points. You're back in the game. Go green. Dateline Science for 25. Dateline Science for 25 points. Listen carefully. Here's a quote Geologists have a saying, rocks remember. So said this man who brought back rocks from the moon in 1969 after being the first man to set foot there. College Park. Neil Armstrong. It is Neil Armstrong. Indeed. Indeed. Go green again. Another. Dateline for 20. Dateline for 20 points. Multiple choice question. The brown stink bug actually introduced into this country from Asia is a threat to orchard growers, orchard growers, because it is polyphagous, P-O-L-Y-P-H-A-G-O-U-S, meaning which of the following? It eats a variety of fruits. It lays its eggs in different kinds of fruit trees. Or it will mate with multiple stink bugs to increase the size of the population. Polyphagous means which of those? No one wants to take a chance. Oh, all right, College Park. It'll mate with multiple. Say it again. It'll mate with multiple. Mate with multiple. No, no. Charles Carroll, the stink bug is polyphagous, meaning it eats a variety of fruits, lays its eggs in different kinds of fruit trees, or will mate with multiple stink bugs to increase the size of its population. Wait, can you repeat? Can you repeat? I think I just did. Uh -oh. yeah. It lays eggs in multiple, uh, lots of different fruits. It eats lots of fruits, absolutely right. Poly means many and phagus means eat. Good answer. Go red. One, two, body systems for five. Uh, body systems for five. Body systems for five points. Here's your question. 
If you suspect someone is not telling you the truth, you might say to them, when you say that, look me in the what? Charles Carroll. Aye. You look me in the eye. I'll know if you're telling the truth or not. Go, Red. Let's get physical for five. Let's get physical for five. You may, go ahead. Let's get physical for five. Let's get physical for five points. It will be the last question of the game. Here it is. It has been recommended to NASA that in the next 10 years, it should dedicate a mission to visit this seventh Neptune, Uranus. Our planet expert over there, Xavier. It is Uranus, absolutely right, for five points. And the buzzer says our game has ended, and it looks like Charles Carroll has done it with 180 points. College Park right behind at 135. We'll double check that score. Be back with you in just a moment. Terrific game here on Science Bowl today. We're proud of all of our players and that green team, College Park, their first time ever. What a first impression they made. They came back. Those two 25-pointers made this a close game. Our final tally today is College Park 135. And Charles Carroll, 180. Congratulations, you guys. Give yourself a nice round of applause. We're clapping, too, for the College Park team. Daniel, would you be good enough to introduce the VIPs in back of you there? Um, this is our alternate, Christopher. Oh, this is our other alternate, Irene. Our principal, Mr. Henry Schott, and our coach, Ms. Shaji. Interesting, the two VIPs you introduced first were the two students there. You got your priorities right. Thank you, Ms. Shaji and Ms. Tandra Schott. Hayden, would you tell us who's back there? This is our coach, Ms. Wharton. This is one of our alternates, Eris, and this is another alternate, Lucas, and that is Miss Snyder. Thank you all for being here today. We hope you had a good time. We hope you had a good time. We invite you to tune in again when College Park is going to be back, we hope for another year. But later this season, Charles Carroll will be back to play Robert Goddard Montessori for the chance to become the third of our semifinalists. We hope to see you then. Until then, I'm Dave Zarin. Bye-bye. <laughs>